It's finally time for the return of the Red Creeper Flowerpot King. Drop a like if you're excited for the return. Welcome back to Python MC. To say that I'm excited for the return here, my friends, is understatement of the century. I'm so happy to be back uploading Minecraft on Python MC. I'm home. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first episode of what I'm going to be calling Pythoncraft, my brand new Minecraft survival let's play. We're going to be going proper old school in this Minecraft let's play because I'm not even going to put in a seed. This my friends, is going to be a totally random world. And I'm actually very, very excited for that. So here we are on our brand new world. If you're interested in the seed, it is right there. It will also be listed in the description down below. The only thing I would request at this early point in the game is that you don't spoil anything that is in this world. I'd very much appreciate it, folks. So without further ado, let's head on over to a tree and let's start slapping it around with our fists. My red creature. Creeper fists, that is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it feels so good to see me old skin back. And I've even gone ahead and gotten one of the Minecraft 15th anniversary celebration capes. I've got a creeper cape here, which is awesome. So yeah, you thought one creeper was bad? Well, check it out. I've got a second creeper on my back. <laughs> so while we're going ahead and getting the basics underway, I just wanted to tell you guys about what sort of things you can expect from this series. Unlike my previous Minecraft Let's Plays on this channel, where I've always made crazy promises to keep the world going for as long as humanly possible, instead, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be starting a new world for every major Minecraft update. So Python Craft is basically the collective name given to this new network of Minecraft Let's Play series. As for my reasoning for this decision, it just comes down to this, my friends. I love starting new Minecraft worlds, and I've realized over the many years I've played this game that I just don't think I'm creative enough to keep a world going super long term. You may remember back in the day, I used to have a dream of having like a multiple hundred episode Minecraft Let's Play series on just one world. But honestly, sometimes you just gotta face up to the facts. I just don't think I'm creative enough to keep a world going that long term. So I think starting a new world with each major Minecraft update is a pretty Pretty healthy balance between having a semi long term world and starting new worlds every now and again. Above all, though, my friends, the goal of this world and indeed the worlds within this series is just to have fun. That's what video games are meant to be at the end of the day. I find starting new Minecraft worlds to be incredibly fun. There's always a massive amount of awesome things to do at the beginning of the world exploring things for the first time, getting your first diamonds, making your first starter base, all of that lovely stuff. Now, I understand, of course, that that might invite the possibility of things becoming a bit samey after a while, but my plan to combat that is this. What I'd like to do is I'd like to theme my builds within each world around the update in which the world is played on. So, for example, here we're in the 1.21 Tricky Trials update. We've got a whole new roost of copper-related blocks. We've got a whole new roost of tough-related blocks. So, I think it'll be a pretty awesome idea to try our best to incorporate copper and tough into the builds that we make on this world. So then, looks like we have ourselves a whopping, whopping great cave entrance here, which is lovely. We've also got ourselves a little bit of starter coal right here. Oh, just the one. Eh, better than none, I guess. Oh my goodness me, does that go down a long old way, my friends. <laughs> All right, there's lots of resources to be had down there, I dare say, but uh, I kind of want to stay alive right now. So how's about we get to work on upgrading our tools, maybe get ourselves a furnace, maybe a little smoker action, all that kind of good stuff. And while we do so, it gives me the opportunity to do all the typical annoying YouTuber things. If you're excited for the return of content here to the Python MC channel and you want to help get this video out there on YouTube, I'd very much appreciate it if you would head down beneath the video and spent a second to drop a like. If you are new around here to this channel, 
all, a big warm welcome to you. I really appreciate you giving my content a chance. And I hope that you'll consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on my future content. If you do want to go one further with your support though, folks, consider checking out pythongv.com slash PC if you're in the market for a brand new gaming PC. I think what I'll do is I will use up pretty much the entire wood pickaxe here, just grabbing myself some cobblestone. Do we want to keep our first tools and things like that on this world though? I mean, kinda? But ultimately, this isn't going to be one of those stupidly long-term multiple years worlds, right? But still, I kind of do want to keep my original tools and maybe the first of certain items in the game, maybe the first diamond, etc. I don't know, could be a cool way to add a little bit of history to the world, eh, folks? So then, it's Operation Upgrade time. We've got ourselves a sword, we're gonna get ourselves one of those axe boys, one of these little shovel boys, and one of these lovely pickaxes. Gonna make ourselves two furnaces, one of which we are going to turn into a smoker. We're going to use, I think, the remainder of these logs here to make some charcoal. What's next on the agenda? I'm thinking some form of food, and I'm pretty sure I saw some sheep relatively nearby. Yep, just up the mountain there. Sheep are fantastic, actually, because then we can get wool for a bed so we can survive our first night. And actually, talking of survival, one thing I do need to do is lock the difficulty on hard. That's how we roll on this channel, my friends. We either go big or we go home. So yeah, hard difficulty, even if we get ourselves into a sticky situation, we'll have to think our way out of it. All right, bit of coal in there, a little bit of mutton in there. Uh, turns out I need to get myself some more wood though, so we can actually make our bed. So we should probably get on that. And there we go, a lovely bed. How's about we have ourselves a little bit of a snooze? Our first news of the entire series. <laughs> oh, snappers. So here we are, technically on day one. Because, of course, when you start a new world, you actually start on day zero. Lovely. Got ourselves some food. We've got ourselves some charcoal. As a result, we can actually make ourselves some torches. And maybe now I might feel a little bit better about going down into the cave. Only, here's the thing, my friends. Tough is gotten at the deep slate layer. So we're going to have to go quite deep into this cave here before we find ourselves tough, which we're going to use to make our starter base. All right. Looks out. Okay. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, I was going to try and take that guy down with no shield, but that's actually more difficult than I first thought. Oh, look at this little guy. That's actually incredibly dangerous. It's Phil's worst nightmare. <laughs> and it's got a sword. Oh, good grief. Right, hang on. Ah, don't you dare. Don't you dare. I'm going to die. I'm actually going to die here. Oh, God. No. No. Okay, come on. Come on, Python. Do or die. Do or die. There's too much grass in the way. <laughs> that got close. <laughs> Real close. So the first enemy we take out is a baby zombie with a sword. Could you get much more dangerous than that? I mean, I dare say there is, but a baby zombie with a sword? That's got to be up there. So then, I was going to go down into that cave to see if I could grab myself some iron to make a shield. But uh, turns out that skeleton is going to be a massive problem. So I think what might be a better idea is if we take to the sea. Now, if we could just spot one of those shipwreck things, we might be on to a winner. Aha! It only looks like a half shipwreck, but it's got the two rooms that I need by the looks of it. This one down here, of course, being the treasure room. Oh, look at all that iron, though. That, my friends, is is way more like it. You know what I should do if I'm gonna do the whole shipwreck thing? Maybe I should make myself some doors. That way, I can place down some little portable air pockets. For any of you guys who don't know, place down a door and it gives you an air pocket underwater. Now what we do is we go underneath to this room down here. This, I think, is the treasure map room. Look at that though, my friends. Not only do we have ourselves our first buried treasure map of this world, we also have a clock. That's actually going to be quite useful when it comes to us being down in the caves. Us being able to know what time of day it is is going to be very useful. So, where oh where is this map going to take us? It is going to take us in an easterly 
direction. All right, so here we are, my friends. X marks the spot. What we're going to do is the 9-9 nine, nine trick. You press F3 to bring up the debug. About halfway down on the left-hand side, there's a line that says block. The first and third numbers in the square brackets both need to be nine. And then you dig down and on Java edition anyway, for some reason, nine, nine within a chunk is always where a treasure chest will be. And would you look at this though, my friends, that is a crazy amount of iron. We've even got our first diamonds. Wow. Now I must admit that was not something I was expected to get from this chest. So Thanks, Minecraft. That's pretty darn pog, if you ask me. Amazingly, we're only two iron ingots off from being able to make ourselves a full set of iron armor. However, the first thing I want to do as a matter of absolute priority, I want to make myself a shield. You get yourself a shield, you can block like 99% of damage in the game. It's actually kind of nuts. The next thing I think we might need is a bucket and of course i'm going to go fill it with water you can use a bucket of water of course to easily and safely traverse cave systems say for example you've got a large drop that you need to go down just chuck a water source down and down you go so then you're gonna tell me this skeleton has despawned now eh i wanted to get my revenge on that guy oh no hang on a minute no 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 he's brought a friend with him oh if you think that is acceptable <laughs> nah, that's not okay, man. I'm just saying that. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Boom. No. Oh, my goodness me. Okay, right, and we are out of here. <laughs> I mean, I got my revenge, didn't I? Just they almost killed me in return. Ah, that's gotta hurt. I've got an arrow in me head. Time for a couple more upgrades before we get ourselves down into that cave. We've got ourselves a sword and we've got a pickaxe. However, I'm going to only use this iron pickaxe to pick up things that actually require an iron pickaxe. So for example, diamonds and gold and redstone and such. Everything else, I'm just going to keep on with a stone pickaxe. I mean, what do you think I am? Made of iron? Not yet. Oh, no way. Turns out one of those skeletons I killed before actually dropped a bow. That is very nice, and it's got a decent amount of durability to it. <laughs> and the good news continues. Look at it. We got some iron. Lovely, lovely. If I could get myself a full set of iron armor by the end of today's episode, oh boy, am I going to be a happy bunny. What's the magic number we're looking for? 11. We need 11 bits of iron. We have four currently, so seven remaining. This, my friends, is way more like it. A bunch of iron on the ceiling here. There was a little bit in the wall here too. Don't mind if I do. Oh, this looks to be an eight vein as well. And there's a death hole. Oh, look at you with your cute little enchanted bow. How about you drop it? Oh, we actually did. <laughs> What have we got? Power one. I will take it. So I've just been exploring some surface caves here. Got myself a little bit of coal. Got myself a good amount of iron. We were looking for, what, 11 more iron in total? We've got ourselves 47. <laughs> While that's smelting up, do we want to have a little bit of a sneak peek as to what's down here? I mean, kinda. I mean, as you can see, there's all the deep slate. I think I can actually see a whole bunch of tough as well. I mean, honestly, tough isn't that difficult to find. And it comes in very, very large splodges that give you multiple stacks of tough per time, usually. So, yeah, there we are. There's one bit there. And here we are starting to find some of the good stuff. So, we've got some gold. Got some redstone here, which is lovely. I wonder... If we might be able to find some diamonds on episode one. We've got two already. We get ourselves one more. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> the timing on that, though, is incredible. If we could get one more diamond, we could make ourselves a diamond pickaxe on episode one. That's not bad going, is it, my friends? Look at that. It does appear to be more than one as well. All right, so we've got another one here. Any more for any more? Or is it just a little too vain? So then, shall we begin on grabbing some of this here tough? I think so, my friends. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself maybe two, maybe three stacks of tough. That should be a good amount to be getting on with in terms of making a starter base, right? So yeah, let's just get this thing rolling, shall we, folks? Alrighty. One, 
two, three stacks of tough gathered. I think what we'll do is we'll call it quits for this cave in today's episode. We will most certainly wind up back here in the future, though. There's still so much to explore and so many resources to pick up. All right, very good. So all of the iron has now been smelted, and now finally we can make ourselves the armor. So there's a cap. There's the shoes, there's the chest, and there's the trousers. All right, very good. Boop, 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 and boop. Excellent. I am now an iron creeper. Yeah. And according to the clock, and indeed the sky, it is actually about to become dawn, which is big, beautiful. Very, very good. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to try and figure out a location for our starter base. Only having not gone for a specified world seed for this series, yeah, we got to actually explore and see what's what. There's no sort of pre-planning involved. It's all a case of just sort of winging it. Look at this, though. I think that this is a flower forest, and it is. <laughs> My favorite biome in all of Minecraft. And even on a completely random world, I still have flower forests spawning next to me. What can I say? This game just knows that I'm coming back. I don't know what to tell you. Do we want to live alongside the ocean here? Oh, no way. I think I've just spotted something completely amazing, my friends. <laughs> Any of you eagle-eyed viewers spot it? In the distance over there? I do believe that is an ocean monument. Yep, a whole bunch of guardians just spawned in. No way. Wait, what the heck? This can only be one thing, right? There must be a sunken shipwreck underneath here, right? If I was to dig around long enough, I think I'd be able to find myself some chests. But yeah, this is a great, great find. An ocean monument. We could totally make a guardian farm later on in the series. And it's been so many years since I've made one of those bad boys. And we have one right next to the coast here. That's just amazing. I don't know what else to tell you. It's just amazing. I think this area here has to be where we set up. And then eventually we can expand out towards the ocean monument. So yeah, for any of you folks who might wind up complaining, saying that I always set up in the same sorts of biomes or the same sorts of locations, I don't know what to tell you. Minecraft has given me this amazing opportunity and I think I would have to be a fool to pass it up. We're still going to try our best to use some of the new 1.21 blocks for our base, though. We've got ourselves a bunch of tough. As a result, we've got ourselves a bunch of polished tough that we can create. And then from there, we can make ourselves some tough bricks. So here's what I'm thinking in terms of a block palette. I'm thinking tough and then stripped birch wood. Stripped birch wood, in my opinion, is probably the most modern looking wood in the game. So yeah, I think it'll go quite well with the tough. There'll be quite a nice amount of uh, contrast between the two textures as well. All right, so check this out, my friends. The ocean monument is over there. We've got a sort of whopping great river slash massive lake here, which is pretty awesome. And then over here, we've got ourselves a little sort of mini lake. I think we could totally work around this, right? If I was to maybe do a little bit of uh, flattening of the land here, I think this would be a perfect place to set up a starter base. Maybe we can have it just sort of here, looking out into the ocean and indeed the sort of estuary. Is that the right word for it? An estuary? All right, let's get this starter base underway, my friends. Step one is rid the trees. And don't worry, it's not just mindless deforestation. No, no, no. We replant things around here. Step two, say, oh my god, because there's a village in the distance over there. Step three, sigh, because you realize you need die, right? And that means going back into the caves. And yes, you heard that right. You're not going crazy. I did say diorite. Yeah, here we go. Step four, flatten the land. And step five, make an actual start on the build itself. Let's start off with some supports. And we're going up five blocks with each support, leaving a four block gap in between each of the supports. However, coming up to the side, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five blocks in between the supports. Now to mix things up a little bit, at what is going to be the front of the base, we're going to have only two blocks between the supports and then over here we're going to make it symmetrical so in the middle, there's three blocks in between the supports. 
Next, we're going to messy up the textures a little bit by adding in some regular tuff in amongst the tough bricks. And now what we need is a quick little fish intermission. Only, yeah, it would be kind of embarrassing to die of starvation on the first episode while we're making our starter base. While the food is being cooked up, I see no reason why we can't keep on going. We're going to add in some birch wood, but what we're going to do is strip it. So it becomes a far nicer texture. Nom, 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 nom. Mmm, lovely salmon. Now we make ourselves a stone cutter so we get a better conversion rate on our stone resources when making stone slabs and stairs and such. Now we're going to add in a polished diorite floor, which I must say looks pretty nice alongside the birch. Now we're going to start adding in some diorite accents around the outside here. And to top off the top, we're going to go at it with some upside down polished diorite stairs. Now we can add in the door. We can also add in a little bit of decoration to the sides here with these birch trap doors. Just sort of breaks up the textures a little bit, I guess. To fully secure the roof here, we're going to go at it with some of these bird poop slabs. We're also going to slab off the tough supports. And then finally, we're going to add in some some more birch trap doors. So we've got ourselves a nice little birch accent at the top here. And there we go. No one will ever spawn on the roof of my starter base. All right, time to add some windows in this bad boy. The only downside of this base design is the fact that there isn't any windows out the front. And that's because I couldn't really find a way to add them in without this place looking a little bit strange, I guess. So this base is almost done. There is only one thing left to do. I'm the self-proclaimed flower pot king in this game, and I haven't got any flower pots up yet. So let's change that, shall we? With all the flower pots placed down, it is now time to fill them, of course. Let's go for a nice little pattern here. We've got white tulips, we've got orange tulips, and red tulips, all looking very, very nice. Nice. So there we are. That's the final one. And well, there we have it, my friends. The infrastructure, at the very least, of our starter base is now complete. In the next episode, I think what we'll do is we'll work on the interior, maybe get ourselves back down into the caves, grab ourselves some more resources, and just see where we can go from there. For now, though, my friends, it is time to wrap up the first episode of Python Craft. I want to thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed today's episode and you want to support the channel and you want to help get these videos out there on youtube i'd very much appreciate it if you'd head down beneath the video and spent a second to drop a like hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and you don't want to miss out on my future content in terms of the comment of the day yes that will be coming back but obviously because this is episode one there are no comments of the day to shout out just yet so yeah next episode onwards those things will return but for now thank you so much for watching have a fantastic rest of your day and my friends i am so so back. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!